Well, welcome to our 13th day together. And uh, today, uh, our theme is, to use Sir John uh, Templeton's words, the return on generosity. And a spiritual law, in his own words, is, those who give freely frequently experience a return on their generosity. Um, so today, uh, again, as I said in the last video, today we're dealing with some of these um, virtues, some of these uh, characteristics that can be summed up in one word like love, forgiveness, and generosity. And these may seem rather broad and general categories, and yet they were and are central to the uh, practical spirituality of uh, Sir John. And uh, in order to understand a generosity, it probably it's best to understand uh, Sir John's own approach to it. Uh, he saw uh, generosity as being basically an expression of the ancient law of cause and effect. Uh, so, of course, in the Indian traditions, that's karma. It's a familiar concept now for us as well. Uh, and of course, in the, I shouldn't say of course, but uh, in the various religious traditions of the world, generosity is highly recommended. It says, for instance, uh, uh, in um, the, the Quran, uh, the likeness of those who spend their wealth in Allah's way is as the likeness of a grain which groweth seven years and in every year a hundred grains. Allah giveth increase uh, manifold, or in many, very richly, to whom uh, he will. Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. And according to one uh, 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 Muslim scholar, uh, the truly Islamic society uh, emphasizes generosity towards the needy, as well as many other uh, uh, characteristics of a spiritual society. Now, um, a few words about generosity itself. Uh, generosity is, uh, as I said, with respect to gratitude, it's, uh, it's a virtue. It's not an attribute of being human. It's something we need to cultivate. Um, and because it is something that needs to be cultivated, we can have a deficit of, uh, of generosity, and that's fairly common. And the claim that's being made by uh, Sir John is that if one is generous, uh, one will experience a return on that generosity. That's a very um, investor, that sounds like investor speak. You know, what is the return on a certain investment? And in that way, certainly, it does. I mean, Sir John was an investor. So there's a return on it, on generosity. And that leads to some, some of the questions that arise in the philosophy of generosity, because after all, philosophy has been a topic in the philosophical uh, musings of philosophers in the West since at least the days of Aristotle, for whom generosity was one of the virtues that needs to be cultivated by the rational or reasonable human being in order to become uh, a, a virtuous and, and happy human being. Uh, Aristotle advised that one should cultivate um, a generosity that uh, finds the mean or the middle path between what he, what what we call prodigality. You think of the prodigal son, perhaps, somebody who, uh, a spendthrift or somebody who just wastes uh, what they have by overgenerosity. And then on the other hand, uh, a kind of miserliness, a, a refusal to uh, be generous with others and even with ourselves. And so Aristotle advises a middle path between the two. But much of what Aristotle writes about Generosity can be seen as one of the two kinds of generosity. There are two basic kinds, as the calculative and the non-calculative expressions of generosity. We're familiar with calculative generosity, and in some ways we might see this notion of return on generosity as more calculative. And that is, we think about, and this goes back to Aristotle, we contemplate or we reason about, we evaluate whether the, the recipient of our generosity is worthy of the generosity whether they uh, deserve uh, some, uh, uh, some liberality on our part. Liberality means giving, giving of our substance. And not only that, what is the appropriate uh, degree of, of, of uh, generosity, of giving that we should engage in? This is all very rational. That's why it's called calculative. And on the other hand, there's a non-calculative generosity. And uh, this is a, a kind of giving without 
any consideration for the circumstances uh, of the of the giver of of the one to whom it's given of the of the giftee if you will and of the gift itself and some examples that are used are of in a, uh, of excessive or extravagant generosity would be when someone um, is hungry if someone asks for someone is perhaps uh, destitute and has very little in the way of possessions and they ask for uh, 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 some food or a small a small donation and one gives them a Porsche or one gives them a hundred thousand dollars just on the street um, or in another case um, perhaps uh, one often worries about whether if one gives some money to a person one encounters on the street that they will use it for something that they was not helpful to them. All, those are calculative considerations, and of course we, we should take them into consideration. So calculative generosity asks about appropriate persons and the suitability of the expressions of generosity. Um, and non-calculative generosity can seem like it's over the top, but there's a kind of uh, ecstasy that comes from just giving everything away. And we see this a characteristic of many of the great saints in human history. The stories are, are countless in, in Hindu spirituality, in Indian spirituality, the, the stories of Muslim saints, of Sikh saints, of, 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 of Hindu and Buddhist saints, of Christian saints as well. What we find is a kind of ecstasy of just giving everything away. Uh, uh, and even to the point where stories are told of, uh, of saints uh, who ha have been subjected to break-ins or burglaries, or robberies, and giving everything, even what the burglars and the robbers have forgotten, giving it to them as well. Now that's non-calculative generosity in the uh, saintly extreme. So um, we do have to find, I suppose, a middle way between those two. Uh, those two forms of uh, generosity. Um, so uh, there is some science to generosity. It's not like this is just, again, a kind of random spiritual practice. Um, and the question arises in a scientific context uh, when scientists uh, uh, consider generosity. The question is why people would be uh, generous uh, when it seems to conflict with uh, the survival strategies of our genes. Um, that, that does seem to be the kind of problem that social psychologists and, uh, and evolutionary theorists uh, would consider. And uh, one, one, reason, one answer to that comes from what's known as the generosity game, which is uh, an experiment that was set up by uh, Werner Guth and uh, some of his colleagues, in which two people, two players share a pie. And the thing is, is that uh, what, what per one player, the player who gets to divide up the pie, has a fixed share. So no matter how much they give to the other person, they're always going to get their quarter piece of the pie. So now the question is, I know I'm getting 25% of this pie no matter what. That's all I'm getting. I'm not, if, I, if, I give, if I keep the rest of the pie, if I don't give it to anyone, I still only get 25%. So the question is, how much will people give to the other partner? Will they give a little of the three quarters remaining or a lot? And what they have discovered is that when they factor out all of the uh, possibilities that could distort the choosing, it turns out that, according to the study, most participants behave generously. It turns out that people often do more in a given situation than is required of them. And, and this, uh, of course, plays into the notion that, that Sir John uh, promoted, and it's the idea of always giving a little bit more, always giving uh, a little bit more than is required of you. Uh, and uh, and um, the, so that if, for, if this is uh, uh, this sometimes equated with the notion of going the extra mile, but for Sir John, the idea was, let's say you finish a task. Uh, yesterday, I was writing an email, for instance. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I find if I write an email too quickly, uh, that it can seem rude and impolite. And also, uh, I might, you know, I might just kind of throw the date in without double checking it. And maybe the date's wrong then. And so I inconvenience people, and I can also sound rude. So if I spend a couple of extra seconds or even a minute going over my email, proofreading it and asking myself, is this appropriately phrased? And then the real extra step here is giving the little bit of extra that Sir John recommended is going to my calendar and making sure that the date is correct. 
I, I mean, I save everybody a little bit of time. And I had to actually think about that. That's a form of generosity. Now, generosity doesn't just mean giving buildings and huge endowments. Sir John certainly did that. He was, that's his philanthropy is why I'm standing here and we're able to do this without cost to the participants. But this ge generosity as he understood it, as he expressed it, is as small as that. Just giving a little bit extra in any given situation to our tasks in life, that little bit of extra can actually make things run much more smoothly and it helps us to situate ourselves within the great, um, the great uh, bounty of the universe in which we live. We give more, we receive more back.